Hi, Mahi. Hi, Lisa. How are you? Good. I think you had a question for me today. I did. Yeah, I was wondering if you could share some thoughts on uh, Maslow's hierarchy and you know how it pertains to uh, nursing assessment. Sure. I just want to let students know that Maslow's hierarchy should be looked at as a guideline and not a set of rules that students have to adhere by when they're doing an assessment. It's a good framework to have in mind, but it's not necessarily something that every patient is going to uh, follow in terms of how they present their priorities and motivations in terms of their own health. And, um, you know, to be honest, there are some critiques about Maslow's hierarchy. And one of them is, is that it's fairly ethnocentric in that um, it really is from a very um, Western um, biomedical psychology is the discipline from which it is from uh, approach. And so it does take more of an individual Listic or um, really takes into account individuality rather than um, what some may look at as more a collectivist uh, standpoint about individuals or patients. And so that's something that we have to keep in mind in terms of when you look at the model, how it is framed. And so um, with that being said, it does come from when um, Maslow is uh, conceptualizing his his model um, or his framework, it really is within the discipline of psychology, but he also looked at um, the motivations that were based on healthy individuals. And so oftentimes when we see patients as nurses, there's usually a health issue or a health question that they're coming with, and that's why we're, we're doing an assessment. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Um, it's also been critiqued as being um, fairly doesn't really concern itself with environmental influences. So in that sense, in terms of um, looking at diversity, it um, doesn't really take that into account necessarily. It's presented as more of a universal framework or model to follow. But we know that patients are very diverse in terms of gender, culture, um, just you know, sexuality, backgrounds, all those things that um, we as nurses take into account when we think about clinical judgment and things like that. So when we're um, prioritizing care and things like that, we really have to um, ask patients the right questions to understand where their motivations lie and not that it will um, necessarily follow Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So that's something that we have to consider. Does that make sense? Maggie. That makes that makes perfect sense. Um, and I totally agree with uh, many of the points that, that you brought up. Um, for me personally, it's it's been quite difficult to apply Maslow uh, when trying to answer you know priority questions, which you know we find uh, in the NCLEX. Um, so to me, it seems like Maslow trying to use Maslow's hierarchy kind of takes away the patient autonomy and the individual individualism of the patient. Um, so yeah, I do agree with uh, a lot of the points you brought up, and it, it makes it makes a lot of sense. Thank you. And I appreciate you saying that from a student's perspective, because it is challenging. You're working with a lot of information and data that's coming from, you know, various aspects in your interaction with a patient. So I want to, you know, maybe talk through an example that might help students understand further why Maslow's uh, hierarchy might not apply in certain situations. So I'm just going to think of a new mom. Right, a new mom who has a new baby and um, or an infant at home who's not sleeping through the night necessarily because they might be feeding the baby through the night, and so their sleep is very much disrupted. But we know that sleep, in terms of Maslow's hierarchy, is um, you know a basic need and it's a priority. But if a mom comes to you, um, you know, uh, during a visit and and you know is obviously tired, but what she's saying to you is that she's most concerned about her maybe um, relationship with her partner. And, you know, based on Maslow's hierarchy of needs, you would mostly focus or should be focusing on her sleep deprivation. But when your patient is presenting to you and talking about how she's most distressed about the deterioration in her relationship with her partner, because, you know, there's this new being in their life and it's changed their routines, then, you know, it makes it hard for the nurse and the nurse probably based on clinical judgment and the way that she's going to ask questions during the assessment um, is not going to necessarily, uh, you know, try and focus only on the sleep. Although nurses know that sleep may be or the lack of sleep may be contributing to maybe um, difficulties in the relationship, the focus is going to be on 
discussing with the patient how to um, increase communication with their partner, you know, things like that. So that's one instance where you can see where Maslow's hierarchy of needs, um, because we know that relationships, that notion of feeling and belonging and intimacy is higher up on the hierarchy of needs. And so, um, you know, again, Maslow's hierarchy of needs is just a guideline. It's not a hard and fast rule. Right, yeah, that's a wonderful example that uh, makes a lot more sense, provides some clarity as to, you know, when Maslow is not always necessarily um, the right hierarchy to use. But um, thank you, Maggie, for this uh, question. And I think we've had a really great discussion on this. So thank you. You're welcome. Thank you.